Hey guys, this is this is awesome. Seeing how this is like probably one of the first sunny spring weekends we've had in the city in a long time for you guys to come and spend your time here is, is pretty great. Um, I'll keep this super short. So I've been um, at Meta almost 14 years. Um, I spent most of my time out in the valley, but I've been out in New York and I live here now um, for about the last five years. And uh, for the, those who don't know, like hacking and hackathons are like core to our culture, right? Like our address is one hacker way. Menlo Park. Um, we've been having hackathons internally since day one of the company. Some of our coolest projects have come out of it. Um, and, uh, and so this is awesome to see this here in, in New York. Um, also, you know, I want to thank each and every one of you. You guys are the reason why we do Llama, right? And why we do all of our open source efforts, whether it's React or PyTorch or like the long history of stuff that we have. And, you know, for those who don't know quite the history of Llama, it was only about two and a half, three years ago that we put out Llama 1 to the research community. Um, and like it kind of went bonkers, right? Um, this was like February two years ago, roughly. Um, and everybody just wanted access to it, right? And we saw people taking it. The weights leaked, which, you know, in the end was fine. It was actually great. That's why we're here. Um, but we saw all the innovation from the developer community that we've seen on things like PyTorch and React and a bunch of the other stuff that we put out there, you know, over the course of the history of the company, right? Like we were, we were a startup once too, right? And we didn't have a lot of resources and some of our best engineers either like open source stuff or contributed to a bunch of projects from the web stack then to the mobile stack and, you know, now to, to the AI toolkits that we have. Um, and, you know, it was like Lambda.cpp, right? And sort of seeing the progress instantly from the ecosystem of getting it running on laptops and Raspberry Pis, and then AMD started running it. it. It was like so awesome. Like I remember that sort of spring of 23 um, that we knew we had to open source it um, and open the weights up. And that's what we did with Llama 2 um, and continue to do so, you know, obviously with Llama 3 and Llama 4. And so um, I just want to welcome you all here. Um, thank you. It, it really is you that we aim to serve with all of this um, and your energy and your enthusiasm is the fuel that keeps us going um, you know, as we try to open this stuff up. So have a great time. And I'm going to hand it over to Connor, who's going to walk us through a little bit more. I'm Connor Hack. No introduction is necessary. Um, so here at Meta, um, as Ash was getting into, we made a big shift towards open source AI. Um, we really fundamentally shifted the AI landscape uh, right around Llama Tool, as he said, um, where not many others are really considering open source as, as really an option for, for their AI initiatives. And it was Meta that was driving this. Um, it's been a catalyst that has really unlocked incredible progress for us um, for some derivative models like Nemotron and some other models that have been built by our partners like NVIDIA, AMD. All of these folks have done fantastic with jobs within this space. So despite the benefits that open source provides, um, developers really face challenges. You know, we've heard your feedback. Um, although it's widely available, you know, harnessing the capabilities can be challenging. Um, a model might be too big for you to deploy, and it's hard to get working the way you want it. Um, and it's really these smaller models that are easier to work with. But then again, you find that the larger models actually help you solve these complex problems. And so this results developers needing to self-host. Um, and that's a really tough limitation for these developers. You. So this is why we built the Llama API. Um, as you may have heard at LlamaCon, we announced this. Um, and it's designed to be developer friendly and easy to get started with some of the intuitive APIs that we've built. Um, this allows you to efficiently scale uh, without reducing, with reducing your production costs. But we'll talk about the integrations throughout this workshop as we go. So first and foremost, you know, you're going to have access to the latest and greatest, including Llama 4 Scout and Llama 4 Maverick. Maverick being one of the best multimodal models in its class, routing 17 billion parameters through 120 experts drawn from a 400 billion parameter pool. Um, but beyond the Llama 4 models, you'll also have access to Llama 3.38b. Um, this is not open source, but it is available through the API. And then finally, you have Llama 3.370b2. So these are the four models that you'll have access to today. So again, though, if you're already using existing providers and you're fixed to a certain platform and it's hard to move away, we have our REST APIs and SDKs that hopefully will be a great tool for you to leverage to adopt Llama API. Um, especially with our OpenAI compatibility endpoint. Um, as you can see here, just in the, in the middle of the slide, just, just two lines, you can get started using Llama API. So we've shared and we've worked with Llama uh, with some of our early preview for the partners who have been having access to Llama API. Um, and so far, it's been a pretty great success. 
Um, they found the platform has been easy to get started with, particularly with that OpenAI compatibility endpoint. But overall, they found it simple, easy to use, and plugs and plays into their existing work streams. One such partner, uh, OpenNote, Open Note, has been running Llama API through their AI-based learning toolkits. Um, and this is used by 250 plus universities around the world. And they have some great statistics here on how much it's been helping their workflow and it's improved uh, their application. Uh, they found that the improved response accuracy was from 65% to 90%, pretty great increase. And they noticed that 84% report better accuracy and more details in the responses provided. Uh, but most importantly, from us at Meta, uh, the site reliability and throughput with the API uh, achieved 99.5% um, of requirements without any 500 errors, disconnections, or timeouts, and that's something that we're really proud of. That reliability means that you can rely on this being used inside of your applications today. But of course, we're not just stopping with, uh, with just inferencing. Um, we're piloting new features, um, such as fine-tuning and distillation. You know, nowadays, the regular model isn't enough. You might want to fine-tune it, you might want to quantize it, but compute is still an issue there. Um, but Meta is going to be taking care of doing all the work in terms of that compute. You just take it and deploy it at scale in wherever cloud provider you have. You serve, take that model to your platform of choice, and you just run it anywhere. We're working to release that soon. Unfortunately, it's not available today. Um, but, it but stay tuned. It's going to be on its way soon. But as you're building, um, you might realize that the speed at which the tokens are generated are not sufficient for agentic applications. The latency might make it difficult to build real-time applications. Um, and so we've partnered with two leading fast inference providers, Cerebrus and Grok. Um, you simply change the model and chat completion endpoint requests, and it'll route to the provider that you choose. And we do have a special announcement today. Um, Cerebrus fast inference will be accessible for the first time at this hackathon uh, for both Llama 4 Scout and Llama 4 Maverick. So come find us at the Meta booth if you want access to this for your project. We will grant you access. Uh, but Daniel's going to be talking a little bit more about uh, everything that that can provide. Excuse the water break. So, so really exciting from that. But of course, we're just getting started with the LAMI API. These are just some of the features that are in the pipeline. We have more that are coming away. Um, but if you haven't already, I know you've received correspondence already, sign up for the wait list and come find us um, at the Meta booth and we'll grant you access to the LAMI API. You'll get access as a part of being here at the hackathon. So we're really excited to see the incredible things that you'll create with it. So beyond this, though, um, let's talk about some of the actual problems developers face. The LAM API is great. LAM API, we recommend you using it for your hackathon projects. But there's a couple of different issues along the way that you might typically run into um, that we want to address and that we've been working on, address on addressing. And one such problem is prompt optimization. You know, you might be using a prompt over here, um, but at the same time, you might be trying to use the prompt somewhere else, and it doesn't work as expected. Um, you'd have to spend time working to optimize it to make it actually work the way you want it. And we found that this is the biggest friction for adopting one from one model to the other. And so that's why uh, we built a tool, um, and we, you know, because developers see the potential of Llama, but even adapting existing prompts between different versions, even different Llama versions, that's where things can get a little tricky. You know, it's not always clear how to make prompts work consistently across versions or how to optimize them for the best results. Um, so that's one problem. Uh, prompt migration, you know, this prompt migration where organizations move from one proprietary model like GPT to Llama, they often experience degraded performance um, if they try to copy their prompts uh, directly. You know, when worked on GPT, won't actually translate perfectly to Llama. Um, and then finally, that optimization is, is frankly difficult. Um, manually tuning prompts is slow, inconsistent, and doesn't scale well when you're working across many use cases or, or teams. So this tool um, is the Prompt Optimization and Migration Automation Tool. Um, and it's built to remove that friction and give you a systemic way to make prompts work better on Llama. This is called, in, in, in GitHub, the actual Llama Prompt Ops Tool. And again, the idea is simple but pretty powerful. Um, taking a number of prompt response pairs from another LLM and feed it into our optimization tool. Uh, so if you're a company or developer migrating from another LLM or a different version of Llama, this tool is going to be your friend. So to launch this tool, all you need is a simple YAML file as well. There's no custom wrappers, no heavy configs. Um, just to find your model source, target, and prompt sets, and you'll be on your way. The goal is to help you move fast uh, from prototype to production, with confidence particularly. So as, as isn't a surprise, we've open sourced the prompt optimization tool, and it's available right now on GitHub. Uh, it includes docs, examples, ready to run workflows um, to help get you started. And so if you have any ideas to improve it, or any use cases that we haven't thought of, 
we'd really love your contribution. So that's what open source is for. So now that you've migrated, you've optimized, but it's time to make the model your own. Um, whether you're targeting a specific domain, adapting to a unique task, or just trying to fill data gaps, having that right training data is, is everything. And so that's where a synthetic data kit comes in hand. You can think of it as a, a data engine um, designed to help you programmatically generate high quality, diverse examples tailored for your application. Um, you simply define the logic, and then the kit handles the rest. So let's talk first, though, about the pain that brought us here. Um, there's a specific two that I want to really mention. Data scarcity, getting enough high quality post training data, data is hard. It's either too expensive, too slow, or for a lot of us, just totally inaccessible. Um, and then also generating or augmenting your current data sets for specific tasks is not, not particularly easy and comes with a lot of privacy and bias challenges. So here is how this synthetic data kit looks in practice. Um, there's four simple steps uh, through a command line interface tool that you'll use. Um, you first ingest data in various forms. Then you curate your data through LLMs uh, as judged to ensure the quality of your data. Um, and then finally, uh, you save your data in various formats um, that's easily consumable for different fine-tuning tasks. These four, these four simple tasks, ingesting, creating the post-training, curating, and saving as, that's how the synthetic data kit works. And so we've actually used the synthetic data kit to generate training data and fine-tune Llama 3 for tool calling tasks. Um, the process was, again, quite simple. First, we ingested open source tool calling data sets from Hugging Face. Then we created, <coughs> that's just the first one. That's pretty good, I'd say. Um, then we create additional chain of thoughts uh, data to help improve the models um, the, for the model's reasoning and decision making. We then curated this data carefully to make sure the quality stayed high. And then finally, uh, we saved everything in the Hugging Face data set format ready for fine tuning. And so here's the result of that fine tuning effort in action. You can see with Llama 3.18b that it saw about a 6% improvement on tool calling evaluation. Llama 3.170b, 9% boost. And then with Llama 3.370b, up to 13% gain on complex multi-tool tasks. You can see the model got either on par or better than some of the other open source models. And that's just the power of scalable, reproducible customization. So again, as we've seen as a pattern, we believe tools like these are best built in the open. And that's why the synthetic data kit is, again, fully open sourced. You can find everything on GitHub, code, templates, data types, documentations, and examples. And then finally, the last resource that's, that we should be calling out is our Llama cookbooks. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, with other cookbooks, it's designed to give you practical step-by-step -step recipes for building on top of Llama. Um, whether that's prompts, data generation, fine-tuning techniques, or evaluation strategies, you need these right combination of ingredients. Um, this cookbook brings these together all in one place. Um, so feel free to check it out. We've got many different examples. When you click on one of these, um, you'll be taken to our GitHub repo, uh, which organized into two main sections. <coughs> you'll see that on the left, we have the getting started side. And this is kind of like that Llama 101. Uh, walks you through the basics of fine tuning, running inference, setting up RAG. And then we have end-to-end -end use cases on the right. Um, these are building chatbots, you know, creating adaptive workflows. How do I actually integrate with work, with, uh, work, ch work chat? Uh, making podcasts from PDFs. So, whether you're new to Llama or looking for a specific use case for your application, this cookbook has you covered. And that is all of the resources that we think really build an end-to-end -end use case for developers on going from start to finish and helps uh, really alleviate some of the pain points of building with Llama. So we have uh, all, these, uh, um, all these QR codes to actually access these repos for you to take a picture and, and navigate them. If you have any issues, we have developers, again, that have worked on this here. So just come find us at the Meta booth, and we'll be happy to... Uh, Help you out, and that's and that's the meta workshop. <laughs>